How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Crypto is absolutely nuts right now with a lot of cryptos up significantly. Bitcoin's up near $30,000 and some cryptocurrencies are moving up even faster than Bitcoin right now. I want to talk about five different cryptos though that I want to be holding during the next bull run. Five that I'm really excited about. Now, this is not everything that I hold now. This is not everything that I'm going to buy in the future, but they are five of, I think, the highest weighting cryptos that I'll have for the next bull run. And I want to talk about them today because a lot of them have had have had a lot of news recently in the last day or two, and I want to explain it. So if you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification underneath the video to see future videos just like this one. While you're down there, check out the link to Bag Tracker AI. I'll put this as one of the top links. This is the app that I'm creating with a few other people to track all your assets in one place, crypto, stocks, cash, uh, everything including liabilities, and show your net worth denominated in Bitcoin. So maybe this year you're worth 10 Bitcoin, next year you're worth 15, uh, the year after that 20. Uh, so we're building this out right now. Just pre-register, put your name and email in, so that way you can be one of the first people to join that. Now, let's take a look at the market. Bitcoin sitting right under 30,000. It's doing incredibly well in the last seven days, up 11%, while the general market is down the, the traditional market. Now, Solana, over that time period, up 32%. Absolutely insane gains. And while Bitcoin's up about 1% in the last 24 hours, Solana's up 8.16. We'll talk about that. But overall, Bitcoin dominance is moving up. People point out specific instances of cryptos that are up more than Bitcoin, like Solana. But generally, the market is down against Bitcoin. You can see that here, Bitcoin dominance chart, uh, actually right here. And we continue to see Bitcoin dominance moving up. We actually actually are at a new high recently for Bitcoin dominance, around 52.5%. And as you can see, there's an interesting level of resistance that I think we'll run into up here. This is the previous support that we had, around 57% on Bitcoin dominance, way back in 2020 when we started to make a run up. And then, as you can see, uh, it broke down once altcoin season happened. Now we're starting to move back up and we have pushed back or bounced against this trend line several times. So the interesting thing to me is this ends right around the next Bitcoin halving, right? The end of April 2024. So maybe we hit this before and get rejected down, but I would be looking for the high 50s on Bitcoin dominance before I really invest heavily into some of these altcoins. Now that might mean some of them run away. As we can see, Solana has done really well against Bitcoin this last week, but overall it has bled to Bitcoin when you take that out, or just when you look overall over the last year, year and a half, it has bled against Bitcoin. So it's great to look at the last week or two, but typically they do bleed back to Bitcoin either when we break down or when we break up of course there will always be some outliers there now bitcoin itself has broken out against this downtrend that we've seen that happened since late 2021 so this is also pretty bullish i've talked about bitcoin a lot so let's move on to some altcoins first one we should look at solana it's up eight percent why is it up eight percent after being up so much the rest of the week too i mean on the last seven days we went from 22 dollars up to 29 also, if you go back a little bit further, we were down at $19 a month ago. If you go back even further, you can see we we're all the way down under $10 a while ago, and it's tripled since then. This is during the FTX collapse. So why exactly is it moving up? Well, there are a couple different reasons. A bankruptcy court last month granted the FTX Alameda estate permission to liquidate its massive crypto holdings, which included $1.16 billion Solana stash as of late August. This caused a lot of fear. However, the Alameda FUD turned out to be less severe than anticipated. They say the FTX estate staked or locked up nearly 5.5 million soul worth 122 million at the time, erasing investor sentiment just last week. So this was blown out of proportion. Also, we've seen CoinShares report the last couple of weeks, massive inflows for Solana, $24 million of net inflows last week. And they also had millions of inflows this week. And they said that Sol continued to assert itself as the altcoin of choice. Also, we have increasing network activity. As you can see from 
uh, Asset Manager 21 shares researchers noted Thursday in a report citing blockchain data by the block. Going from about 200,000 transactions, uh, 200,000 active addresses, all the way up to about 240,000. So a 20% increase over about a month time frame. The analysis also noted that Solana recently activated a tech upgrade that reduced validator hardware requirements and added optional zero-knowledge compatible encryption for transactions. So there are a lot of reasons why Solana is doing well right now. Uh, now, I don't hold any Solana right now. I will be looking to add to it for the next bull run or to buy some for the next bull run. But I have been on the right side of this Bitcoin dominant trade where I went heavy into Bitcoin around here, selling a lot of my alts, and then we've been moving up. I sold my alts into Bitcoin. So I'll be looking for Solana for the next bull run, but I'll probably do a little bit of waiting myself. Okay, before we go any further, I want to give a big shout out to Trust Wallet. This is an app that I've used for years, and they just rolled out a big update. They're making everything a lot sleeker, a lot easier to use. And honestly, this is one of the things that I use to move my crypto. Now, most of my crypto, I keep long term in a cold storage wallet, but I do keep a, a decent percentage uh, it kind of in transit because I don't want to get out my cold storage wallet all the time so uh, I move it to trust wallet from exchanges and then from trust wallet to my cold storage also I use it because I think all of us need a little bit of flexibility in case we want to go use an exchange right and you don't want to have to pull out the cold storage all the time for that um, so whenever you need a little liquidity that's why I use trust wallet for and now they are revamping a lot. They're making the Trust Wallet logo, I think, a lot cooler. They are uh, making it really easy to use the app. And as I said, it's very sleek. It's a user-centric layout, smooth wallet switching, easy feature discovery, quick copy wallet address options. Now, um, they have rolled this out to browsers as well. I would highly suggest using Trust Wallet if you don't already. I'll leave a link to it underneath the video. They are a partner of the channel, so I appreciate that. And let's get back. Now, on to the next one. We have to talk about Ethereum. Obviously, Ethereum is the second largest crypto out there. A lot of people think that it's not going to move up that much because it's so big already. But, you know, if Bitcoin moves up to 100,000, you better believe Ethereum's right there at 5,000 or higher, most likely higher, especially when we start to have movement from Bitcoin into altcoins. Ethereum's bound to have some big narrative. And you can see since the merge, it has been deflationary. And just in the last couple weeks, we've seen Grayscale move to convert its Ethereum trust to a spot ETH ETF. Now, if Grayscale Bitcoin ETF gets approved to become a spot ETF, you better believe Ethereum's probably right behind it. Of course, the SEC could make some case for approving Bitcoin and not Ethereum, but if Ethereum gets approved to be a spot ETF, that means that they're going to be able to get more inflows they're going to have a lot of people that want to buy this because they might be able to stake the trust or to get some kind of yield for it uh, and a lot of people will just want exposure to ethereum in general because they like what's happening in the crypto ecosystem so this could cause ethereum to have a lot of inflows as well and could cause the price to go up pretty drastically i, I like ethereum and honestly if you want to do stuff in crypto you need tokens like this you need layer ones to be able to just to pay for a transaction fee. So if you want to do anything in crypto besides just buy Bitcoin and move it off to cold storage, you need something like Ethereum. So I'll be looking at buying more Ethereum. I do have exposure to Ethereum right now. Like I've said so many times, about 83 to 85% Bitcoin depending on the day. Uh, and then I'm about 5 to 10% Ethereum. Uh, so I am looking to buy some more Ethereum though for the next bull run. The next one you have to look at, obviously, is Polygon, in my mind. All-time highs, UK EVM, has reached a new all-time high in TVL and has increased 40-plus percent over the last 30 days. Obviously, uh, this is uh, fantastic to see TVL go up. Uh, it's something that a lot of people don't really pay attention to during the bear market, but it is important to see more growth. I mean, this is significant growth. We're talking about 
38, uh, 38 million all the way up to 57 million, 56 million um, over the last 30 days. So definitely a nice increase. Um, and a lot of people look at the money value instead of the actual uh, polygon value. I would look at both, but either way, they have increased TVL, ZK, EVM will be big, and they're making so many big partnerships as well for Polygon. They're so mainstream in crypto compared to a lot of other cryptos that I think this is gonna be one of the first things that people put money into after they start taking money out of Bitcoin and looking for other opportunities. From there, you can get a little bit more DGEN. Caspa has been moving. Over the last one year, it is up 3,100%. So it's done a 32x. The market cap is right over a billion dollars. A lot of people are calling for this to be a top five or top 10 crypto. If it was top 10, it would 8x versus the rest of the top 10 cryptos. Like it wouldn't just 8x in general. It would have to 8x versus all these. So you're talking about like a 40 cent Caspa. I am a Caspa holder, but it's a very small amount in my portfolio as of now. It's something that I'd like to buy more of if we get the opportunity and we haven't really gotten a good buying in opportunity unless you want to buy near all time highs. Typically, that's not something I do. But if Bitcoin dominance continues to move up, there will be a time to go out and buy something like Caspa in my mind, the number of cash holders has reached an increasing amount, uh, pretty much daily, you can see how many people are starting to hold Caspa. Now, it's not a huge increase. I mean, we're talking about over the last month, maybe increasing from 231K up to 238K, so 3 or 4%. But you have to remember, that's over a month. So this isn't a time where people are super excited about cryptocurrency. It's not like there are a lot of new people buying cryptocurrency. It's a lot of the same people that have been around. So these are people that are moving to CAS specifically, which is probably part of the reason why it has moved up even more than the general market. Now, let me know your thoughts on CASP underneath the video. I have a full video on it. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it on the end screen. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Check out the link to Trust Wallet underneath the video too. I really think it's one of the best options out there for a hot wallet.